Two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that made all the difference. on that trail where it's like it was just torture so it's gonna be quite an adventure and if there's adventure to be had I will find it War pain. Like beyond epic. What do you mean? It's some beautiful paths can't be discovered without getting lost. Yeah, my calves are so pissed. Ah. Uh, yeah, we're all we're all feeling it this morning in our calves and our quads. Tell you what, can't beat this for a morning view. <laughs> Good morning, air mule. Good morning. Slept like 14 hours last night. Yep, very close. It was amazing. And uh, had the convert sleep. This is not a hammer. Shock shockingly well. Really good. Hmm. I woke up in the middle of the night though, covered in sweat. It's like, oh, I guess when it's 50 degrees and you have a zero degree quilt, maybe you shouldn't wear bunch of clothes to bed. You were making a lot of noises over here. I don't know if that's why you were sweating. <laughs> so at the campsites here in the canyon <clears throat> you have these uh, metal boxes that you can store your food because the critters are all around and if you leave your food unattended they will they'll get in your bag and chew through it. It's a nice pose Chuck. I like to pack my tent in provocative poses. You gotta stretch man. You gotta Ugh. Look at this guy. We've performed our idiot check. Here's the <laughs> master idiot checker. And I think we have everything. 821, not quite Jeremiah Stringer time, but we're hitting the trail here from Cottonwood. Well, yesterday when we were seeing the helicopters fly over, this is uh, where they were dropping those packages off. We saw these things right here flying through the air. And uh, it's obviously supplies for a work camp. Looks like it, they got their shelter over there. And uh, these are all their supplies. A lot of stuff. We're starting out at 4,200 feet of elevation at the Cottonwood Camp. And we're going to be going up 8,300 feet of elevation. So, whereas yesterday was a story of all downhill, today is going to be the quest for elevation. The question becomes, am I going to take this alternate route up to the North Rim, which adds three miles. It's, uh, it's called the Old Bright Angel Trail, which is the original trail that went through quite some time ago and they don't maintain it anymore. It adds a significant amount of time to your day. It's not uncommon to see the National Park Service crews working in the trail corridor. 
A water pipeline that requires an immense amount of repair and service runs underneath the trail from Roaring Springs to the South Rim. Rebuilding a, a outside wall that pulled out um, due to some rock fall. Um, and also as an added bonus, we have to build a wall that um, keys in our pipeline, our uh, Trans Canyon pipeline. Um, so we got a probably uh, nine foot wall to build over here. Wow. And all this stuff here was airlifted in, huh? Yep, it was all airlifted. Uh, all kept brought this in about in the end of October. And this is our first real leaper. Wow, it's a lot of work. We give you guys some mad props for doing this. Thanks, we're pretty, happy to do it. Pretty awesome, yeah. yeah. For those that hike with me, they know I'm a meticulous planner. When researching the route for our rim to rim hike, I kept coming across a trail that diverged from the North Kaibab Trail near Roaring Springs Canyon. This trail followed along Bright Angel Creek for 1.8 miles before rapidly gaining elevation towards the North Rim, eventually meeting up with the Ken Patrick Trail, which could be taken back to the southwest, ending in the same parking area that the North Kaibab Trail ends at the Bridal Trailhead. Taking the established route from Cottonwood Camp, the distance to Bridal Trailhead at the top of the North Rim of the canyon was 6.5 miles with an elevation gain of 6,900 feet. Taking this longer route only added 3.6 miles to the total day's mileage with the same elevation gain. 10.1 miles isn't too bad, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Through my research, I discovered that this old trail that still exists running through the upper Bright Angel Canyon on the maps was created by Francois Emile Mathis back in 1902 when he was surveying the area for the United States Geologic Service. The route was improved slightly by David Russ between 1903 and 1907. This route became known as the Old Bright Angel Trail. After construction began of the North Kaibab Trail in 1920, the Old Bright Angel Trail fell completely out of favor and has been unmaintained by the Park Service ever since. Sporadic usage over the ages is the only thing that keeps this trail alive. This trail's current relationship with Mathis and Russ's original path is unknown to this day. One of the neat things about the Grand Canyon is every bend that you turn, there's a new surprise for you, like this waterfall. We're only 1.1 miles east of the Cottonwood Camp into our second day, and man, what a treat. This would be awesome, like on a 100 degree day, drop down in there and go for a dip. Wow. So this is where it gets fun. This is the trail that I was just on, heading in from Cottonwood Camp. 1.3 miles, you come to your crossing, this bridge right here on the, uh, the North Kaibab Trail. But I think what I'm gonna do is take the old Bright Angel Trail. It is not maintained. There's a bit of bushwhacking. It adds three miles in approximately five hours to your hike. And I'm gonna be heading off into that canyon. And uh, hopefully I don't get lost. So wish me luck. We're gonna take the road less traveled, I guess. Just looking down from the Bright Angel Trail, the helipad, if they needed to bring a helicopter in. So these are the old telegraph lines that run through the Grand Canyon. You'll see these up along the ledges. The old Bright Angel Trail that we're following continues with these telegraph lines, and it's my hope that uh, we can just kind of continue following them along. Uh, it looks like Chuck is making his way up. I don't know if you can see him down there. The group's splitting off. Jeremy and Rob are taking the North Kaibab Trail up to the North Rim, and Chuck and I are gonna take the Old Bright Angel Trail up to the Ken Patrick Trail. So it's gonna add three miles to our trip, and uh, from what I've read, about five hours of additional hiking. So it's gonna be quite an adventure and if there's adventure to be had I will find it but it's marked on Gaia so if the trail isn't quite as well worn as kind of what you see here all I have to do is look at the map there and um, should be able to guide me north south east or west um, but it's gonna be interesting I, I kind of I like getting off trail because you see things that a lot of other people don't see and I think the chance for wildlife encounters are greater getting off of a, the beaten path so to speak so as soon as uh, Chuck make, winds his way up here, we'll, uh, we'll get this show on the road here. What an amazing view up here though. Just incredible. That's my boy Chuck right there. Either he's coming to join me or coming to tell me to turn the f around. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna get there. He's gonna be like, 
That's a cool rock, huh? <laughs> so this old Bright Angel route is definitely a challenge. They got rock cairns around, which are super, super helpful. In certain stretches like this, you can definitely tell where the trail is. But man, there's parts where you gotta double back and figure out where in the heck you are. This is the stuff you gotta watch for. I already had to stop. I had a cactus needle in my toe, which uh, I don't advise doing, but because they don't maintain the trail, you gotta avoid this stuff quite often. Cause it'll, little buggers will get you. The views in this canyon right here, where the Bright Angel Creek goes through, are just amazing. So right behind me down below, this is where Bright Angel Creek splits off to the right, and that's where we're gonna be. And then Roaring Fork goes off to the other side, and here comes the helicopter. That just like sneaks right up on you, doesn't it? So right center screen there, that's Roaring Springs Pump House. You can see the cables going up top to power the pumps. That's what feeds both the south and north rims, that water line. So these little guys here are called Karens. And uh, sometimes this is the only thing marking the trail. Nice. Oh, here's our trail. Right after we cross. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Nope. Oh. 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 oh, man. That's incredible. So that's uh that's bushwhacking right there. Mm, yeah. Hamburger. Ow. That's, that's war pain. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> There's like a million ways to die on this trail, seriously. <laughs> so Mule and I just found this fantastic spot. It's just before the uh, trail crosses the Bright Angel for the last two times, but you got this spot, you could put a few tents, maybe, maybe even a hammock, but it's right next to the creek and it's got shade from the sun right in these juniper trees here behind me. Bunch of really nice spots to uh, sit, big rocks. Definitely a nice spot, nice stealth spot if you're on the old Bright Angel Trail. So we're gonna get some water, camel up, and we gotta get this show on the road because we are moving slow. It's a tough trail, not gonna lie. Definitely uber advanced. Looks like up, huh? Great. Let's see you roll down this one. <laughs> if you're traveling south to north along the old Bright Angel Trail as we were, a great spot to stop for lunch is at a place where the trail diverges from Bright Angel Creek. This may be the last reliable water source on your way up to the North Rim. Access to the creek is easy, and there are a number of large rocks in the area to sit down and relax before the big push up to the north rim. There is another small creek and waterfall, however this creek may be seasonal and shouldn't be depended on as your last water source. Alright, so we just finished our lunch, and that was the last of the water, and now we got to do 3,000 feet straight up to that through 
that crap that you see mule going through. So it's nothing but elevation sun and it looks like a bit of misery here. But, oh, I think you lost something, mule. <laughs> oh man, it's always an adventure. Two water bottles come shooting down the cliff. Whew. Now, so somehow we gotta get around here and we gotta get around that point where that waterfall is on this sketch trail that looks like this. I don't know, man. This is like the most amount of bushwhacking I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly people have been this way before, but holy cow. This is some sketch. Lean! <laughs> that tight your butt hole? <laughs> yeah. across these falls here. I'm not sure what they're called, but man, it has been tough getting here. Going along that red, that redstone there, it's just super sketch. Like, I don't recommend this trail to like anybody. Like, you could easily fall and die. Don't fall, Chum. <laughs> don't get a boo-boo. <laughs> That's a big boo-boo, dude. At 6,000 feet. We got 2,000 more to go. What do you think, Chuck? We're 25% of the way there. <laughs> Chuck's like. This is where I live now. And this is where I live. We might actually be camping out here tonight. We're not sure. It's uh, it's debatable. Man, it takes some effort to get here. It's the story of the day right there. <laughs> and we got to be around, oh gosh, about 7,000 feet. And this is our first glimpse of snow. Uh, yeah. What do you got for elevation? 72. Snowball fight. Somewhere up here, we meet up with the Ken Patrick Trail, which should be, compared to what we've been doing, a relatively flat trail back to the North Rim. Hopefully we can at least hit that before dark. It's 341. We just reached the uh, Coconino layer of limestone which is the uppermost layer in the Grand Canyon. That's cool, there's all these like shelves and striations and it just kind of crumbles in your hand. What's our elevation? 7360. 7360, so we got about a thousand realistically. Let's get her done. So this is a dead ponderosa pine and the Grand Canyon has the second most lightning strikes of any place in the United States. You can see this one's been subjected to some major lightning strikes. Ow. Not too far off from finishing the bright, the old Bright Angel Trail here. Um, looks like we got just a few hundred feet of elevation more before we should be crossing paths with the Ken Patrick Trail. But first, we gotta go through some more scrub oak. I tell you, on this trail, there are so many things that wanna jump out and bite you. Aside from weather and potential animal encounters, one of the most frequent dangers you'll encounter on the old Bright Angel Trail is the diverse plant life you'll no doubt get up close and personal with. Agave and yucca plants are like daggers that easily pierce the flesh. Pin cushions, prickly pear cactus, cotton tops, and thistle will likely find their way into your shoes and lower legs while sagebrush, barberry, 
Puncture Vine, and Gamble Oak will constantly grate against your face and any other exposed skin as you fight your way through the undeveloped backcountry of the Grand Canyon. So sick! Oh shit, touching me! Ah! <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, baby! Old Bright Angel Trail. Oh, it's unimproved. That's what happened. Unimproved. <laughs> there is no improvement on that trail. Now, like five miles of camp. <laughs> I just had service, I called uh, Midwest Backpacker, Mr. Almost Jeremy LaCroix, and uh, I had enough service to leave him a message. The Kent Patrick Trail is a lot more established, obviously, than the uh, Old Bright Angel Trail. It's easier going, but we're running out of daylight and it's getting cold. Right now, honestly, it's like the mental game for me is done. Like if this is all it's gonna be, I'm totally cool with this. Oh, yeah. Like this doesn't bother me at all. That last push up the hill, man, I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dude, that straight up with no switchbacks, that was brutal. <laughs> that was absolutely brutal. I mean, there's some points on that trail where it's like, it's just, I feel like it was just torture. I don't know how I'm going anywhere right now. <laughs> Just looking at your leg. All right, guys, heading to bed. Had uh, one heck of an adventure today, climbing the uh, old Bright Angel Trail with Mule. So we're going to be doing North Rim all the way to Indian Garden, so almost a full rim to rim tomorrow. And uh, it's just about eight o'clock here now, and I just finished up dinner. Had some chili tonight. I'm ready for bed, and I'm gonna hit the hay and uh, get some sleep. We'll see y'all in the morning. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, Though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, and leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. <laughs>